Now, before I get too stuck into doing the dashboard, I'm going to work on the roof panel, and I'm going to try and shape this and make it a little bit better of a transition from the windscreen into the roof line. Now, we showed you last time how we put this panel on, and it went down really nicely, except the lines didn't really work. Great from the side, great around the A-pillars, but actually right across the top here, coming out from the line of the windscreen, it looks very abrupt, and it just kind of drops all of a sudden. So I'm going to try and address that using some foam and build up something that I can keep glued on the top of here, and then I can just resin over and bond into the rest of the car. Obviously, I'm going to have to clean up this edge before I do that, but the foam that I'm going to use is this really thick, I think it's about two and a half inch, uh, open cell foam. And I can't even remember where I got this. I think I picked it up from somebody who was throwing it away. Don't know why. Probably had some equipment around it by the looks of it. Looks certainly about the size to hold a server or something similar. And all I've done is used a knife and cut off some strips about an inch wide and they'll just get glued down on the front. I've got a couple more, I'll get those glued down on the front as well. And whilst this is setting, because the glue's going to take a little while to dry, I'm going to start doing some more stuff on the dashboard. So in the dashboard, we've got a couple of important pieces that we need to locate, and one of them is the clocks unit, and this wants to sit centred above the steering wheel, not so much that it's um, poking right up into the field of view, but also not too low that the steering wheel obscures it. Now, because we have a much smaller steering wheel, and essentially this layout is designed for a much bigger one, there's always going to be some area of it that's occluded by some part of the wheel, depending on the position that it's in. But to mount it in place, it's got two little mounting tabs at the bottom that bolts go through from the original system, and these little spring clips at the top. And my plan is to use all of those in this little tacked up system in order to try and mount this in in a really easy way to remove from the dashboard without needing too much work and without having to put your hand all the way up from the bottom to try and reach, in to reach anything particularly faffy. So to locate it left and right, I started with some 10mm tube down here and put a riv nut in each end, bolted it onto the bottom and then just positioned this in the car in order to get it roughly in the right place left and right and then tacked those in place. And I'm pretty happy with where it's ended up. Now to make the use of these clips at the top as they would be on the normal car, you would see how they are here. I've just run some inch box and just spent some time at the vise bending it into shape. I could have used the ring roller, but I think this is a little bit too thick and a little bit too wide to effectively work. And it would have had potentially a bit of a twist to it where the whole of the bar wasn't supported. So I just used it in the vise and just tweaked it back and forth and back and forth. And I've got a really nice curve that matches up nicely to the inside or rather the outside of the clock faces. Now these clips I've bent backwards a little bit and all I'm using is some 10 millimeter tube welded on a couple of stops at the back of this bar and to put this in you just make sure that the bottom tabs are over the two little standoffs for the bolts at the bottom. They drop in, there's a little uh, skirt at the front actually which is easier if you just put it in that way and it drops straight in and then you push these down underneath and they just go past there and then on the front portion of it you can get it right the way back. Now obviously this part of the dashboard is going to come off so you will be able to get in around the back like this as well but they just go in through there and it fits in and it holds really really nicely. It doesn't move around, it doesn't seem to squeak. There's a little bit of a gap around the top but that will actually be taken up when we wrap any material over this in order to hide the steel so I'm not too bothered about that. And generally it just seems to work quite nicely holding like that. I'm actually not sure I even need to use the bolt holes on the bottom. As nice as they are to locate it and hold it in position, I don't think I'm going to need to actually bolt this in. So it's almost a bit of a quick release set of clocks in this now. To remove it, you push those down down, pull them forwards, and then the clocks come out if you need to get to anything. So with the clocks in, we can start putting in the rest of the dashboard frame up to the top level, and that's going to include pieces going from the clocks around over to the side here, which will frame in the access hole into this bay, as well as give us the actual shape of this side of the dashboard, and we can do the same across to this side around these vents, because at the moment, they're only held in with two little bolts, two little tabs, and they're very, very flimsy, so we need to give them some more support. These vents also give us the shape of the very front edge at the top, because we're going to try and follow this curve all the way around here, right up to the left-hand side of the dashboard, and obviously take it across there into this side here. It's just going to come right up and butt into the side. So we need to build a little frame, and then bend it all the way over, all the way around, and then we can start looking at panels to go on top.
Well, unfortunately overnight, because I couldn't put the cover on the car, of course it had to rain, but it hasn't rained very much at all, and it hasn't affected anything. This was basically cured by the time it happened, and nothing else on the car seems to have been damaged. Everything seems fine, bar a few water spots on the paintwork. Now the resin that's on the top here is soaked into the foam, which is really, really good. It means that I'm not just gonna have to be sanding through a big heavy layer of resin, all the way across the top of this and I can actually use a power sander and go down and shape a lot of the little bump, lumps and bumps off the top of this and then put another coat of resin on and that will seal more of the top layer so that it, pr it presents me with a, a decent surface to actually get a finish on. Now around the whole edge I built this little um, duct tape dam basically to stop the resin flowing off because until it sort of started to set it does flow quite well even though I bought the low flow like high viscosity or low viscosity I think low viscosity I can't remember um, resin it still wanted to flow quite well off the top of the uh, the piece so we had to make sure that it soaked in reasonably well and just keep working it up so hopefully I can get the sander down get another coat of resin on and get a little bit more shape into it and I'm going to use this convenient panel from the old chassis or rather the chassis but a panel we weren't using and try and build a cover so that tonight I can actually put the cover on Not long after I started sanding, it began to rain again, so I had to cut that short and I went in the garage to do something else. And what I decided to do was build up a surround for the extra vent that we're going to add to do the footwells. Now the heater has four outlets, obviously two are coming up here, one is going into the windscreen vent which we're making up, and this vent is going to go just down here, like that, and it will do the floor vents. Now this is actually out the back of my old A6. This was in the center console and it had the two outlets coming either side to do the rear passengers. Um, it's perfect for what we need for a few different reasons. One, it has two vent controls that are independent. They can be directed so we can have one pointing each direction, essentially up and down in this case, but actually once it's in, it'll be left and right. So it'll split the air between the two footwells. And it also has a pair of valves on the back so that you can close it off, which is really good. It has the little mechanism on the back there, closes the two butterfly valves. And that means we don't need to buy another vent closing valve for the heater box. We can just use this one so long as this little um, dial can be easily accessed. Unfortunately, it doesn't sit flat. Obviously very few center consoles, or in fact very few vents these days, are completely flat. So this needs something to bring it from being uh, at a bit of an odd angle so that it is flush with the metal that we have. Now we could either tip it across like that, which would work, this would leave this vent control on the driver's side, um, but that still doesn't help us a great deal because the mounting point, these little springs here, still wouldn't necessarily be easy to clip in. We need something that wraps around that they can clip into because there are no screw holes on this. So I've made this, which is a little metal surround with some four millimeter or five millimeter rod wrapped around so that it fits the same dimensions as this. And basically this goes through like this. There we go. So you can see that gives us a nice flat plane that we can attach onto the inside of the car, which is really useful, and it keeps it perpendicular, which means the angle we're gonna have to make the adapter at can just be 90 degrees, because basically this runs across, and the top of here is in line with the vent hole out of the heater on this side. So it just needs a 90 degree adapter that goes from this shape round into a two inch hose, and that will be absolutely perfect. And this just fits down really neatly inside here like that so that's the last of the vents for the passenger compartment uh, or rather for the passengers now we have one more that we need to do for the windscreen and this is going to sit just down above here so that it can be a couple inches deep because obviously it's a two inch hose that's going to go onto it but we haven't actually got that yet i've been looking around and there aren't many side entrance ones most of them come in at the back and then it splits and comes up and obviously for packaging that's not really going to work very well so i think i'm probably going to design something and then have it printed up um, so that we have a side entrance valve with a 50 mil inlet most of the ones i found are larger than that they're two and a half give or take so with a 50 mil inlet on that side that will then blow through and it'll heat the windscreen 
Sanding this was really easy compared to what I expected. The resin did a really good job of just firming up most of the structure. Um, there were some places where the resin hadn't gone all the way down and you could tell the difference in sanding where it was just twisting it effectively while I was using the little rotary and it was pulling it and it wasn't actually sanding in the right spots because it was pulling the other bit around but where the resin was really nicely set near the top it just came off and it didn't twist around it didn't move and you get a really nice finish on it so I've put another load of resin on I got that on as soon as I possibly could so that it can spend as long as possible curing before I have to cover the whole thing up but I have got an idea how I can basically block this off so that the, uh, the cover on the car isn't going to stick to this whilst it uh, cures overnight. So that'll be really useful, but I might put one more coat of resin on this either today or tomorrow, depending on how this one goes, because it is a bit cooler than it was yesterday, so the resin's gonna take longer to dry. I'm gonna give it about an hour or so, see what it's like, and I'll either put another one on today, or I might do it tomorrow. Well, it's actually about three weeks later now, and as you can see, all of the contours on here have been nicely shaped out. It's taken that long to just continually go over and over and over, sanding it down, filling it back up again, sanding it down. So I've used a lot of fill. I've probably used the better part of two, 250 mil of filler on this but I've probably also sanded at least half of that off, which is good, I guess. The back edge is still a little bit rough, but you ever get to that point where you're just sick and tired of dealing with a problem? And that's happened with quite a few things on this car, which is why we've ended up with so many jobs that are about 10% off being completely finished. So at some point, we're probably gonna have an episode where we just go through a bunch of things that we need to get done sooner rather than later and finish off the 10% list, as I'm calling it. But I am really happy with how this has come out and how it's looking. The shape's really nice. There's still a couple of little undulations here and there, but we'll deal with those in due course. Just add it on that 10% list once again. And if you'd like to support us in buying Bondo effectively to, to fill in and then sand off from the car, you can support us at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy t-shirts like these, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, have a look on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We do try and post there occasionally, especially when new episodes are coming up and some little behind the scene things. And when we go on uh, trips out and about, we also post there as well. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen, we'll see you next time and leave a comment. Let us know what you think.